Welcome to the From Concealment Podcast, the show for firearm enthusiasts who like to shoot, train, carry, and compete. Get ready for some shooting and sight, firearm and accessory reviews, and of course, insight on concealed carry. And now, broadcasting from behind enemy lines in the From Concealment studio, it's Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Hey, Freedom Nation, this is Pete Mitchell. And I'm Daniel Sams. And you are listening to the From Concealment Podcast, which is being brought to you by FastOC.com. If you want to take some classes, you want to learn some great stuff, whether it's rolling your own ammo or uh, maybe some shotgun defense classes, pistol classes, advanced CCW classes, and you are in Orange County, California, head on over to FastOC.com. Check them out. They've got all kinds of great classes coming up. I am always at their handgun challenges, though. At this point, I think we're actually done for the year as far as uh, handgun challenges for the year. But the courses are not done. they got all kinds of great courses. You want to go through an AK course? You want to go through a three-gun course? Man, let me tell you, check it out, fastoc.com, all kinds of great stuff. You'll see me there. I love training. In fact, there's probably nothing I enjoy more than training, well, except for maybe competing. And then I usually lose, but I have fun. <laughs> and that's, that's the name of the game for me. So uh, so anyway, Dan, um, uh, what, we, what was the topic we wanted to talk about? We literally just talked about it like three minutes I, ago, and I can't remember now. Oh, oh. About eighty percent lowers, man. I'm yeah. excited about it. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's let's preface this correctly. This episode, we're going to talk about the eighty percent lower. I'm going to give you some of my opinions, guys, on the eighty percenters. Uh, I'm going to tell you the good, the bad, and uh, the uh, the ugly. So let me start out with the ugly. The ugly is if you live in a communist state, such as California. Uh, which is where I live. You're not technically allowed to create an 80% firearm without telling the California DOJ and we are going to give you a serial number and they're going to make you put that on there within, I believe it's 10 days. Don't quote me on that. And that's just, those are the rules. Them's the rules here in California. Now, I personally am morally opposed to this. Uh, However, I also like my freedom. And since I will not... Uh, I, I don't have the you know, like it would take millions of dollars to fight the state of California. I don't have millions of dollars to fight yeah. frivolously on this. So personally, I have chosen to uh, to destroy all my eighty percent lowers, and I know that's like sacrilege. I totally get it, uh, and it is true that at this point I have a crap ton of uppers because <laughs> <laughs> I no longer have my eighty percent lowers, and it, it's actually kind of a funny story. I, I actually had something go down. Uh, with a buddy of mine, and I literally just freaked out one day and was like, I cannot risk the 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 government, basically the state, coming to my house, searching my house, and finding it. So I literally destroyed every 80% lower I had. Um, literally, I had uh, at least six uh, polymer 80s. Destroy them all, right? I took everything out. I got uh, all the triggers. I got uh, all that stuff. Just destroyed them. I was like, I, I, for me, the peace of mind is worth it to know, okay, I don't need to worry about that. If if I get raided, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't know what they would raid me over, but it doesn't really matter. They, they don't really seem to care about our constitution anymore. They at least can't nail me on any of the stuff that I got. Everything I got... It was totally legal, 100, 100% legal. All my ARs are either, either featureless or fixed magazine. Uh, any other firearms I have uh, that they know about, and they don't technically know about everything, but that's also legal. Like if you bought it back when it they you know did a private parts transfer back before the state uh, forced you to go through it, that was legal, right? There was nothing that said, oh, you have to now tell us that you did a private party transfer. At least they haven't passed that law yet. So I've got everything I've got was legally obtained. It was legal at the time. Uh, but the, just the ugly side, if you're in, if you're in a, an unconstitutional state like California, you got to think that stuff through and you got to decide for yourself if you're going to break the law. Personally, I don't think it's worth it, so I don't. Now, here's what I will say about 800 percenters. The best thing I ever did for my own knowledge was building 80 percenters because it, yep, it, yep. 
I was brand new to the gun world, right? Brand new. Uh, uh, here in California, we got this pretty crazy 30-day rule. We can only buy one handgun every 30 days. And, and so, in fact, in fact, I think they just passed the law saying we can only buy one gun. Now, now it's like long and, hand, and handgun. I don't know. They're stupid in California. But at the time, it wasn't illegal to make an 80 percenter. So I literally bought, bought kit after kit of, of 80 percenter. They give you everything, up the upper, the lower, uh, the the jigs, everything. And what that did for me on the Glock side is, you know, you know you're literally building a, a handgun from an 80 percent. So my knowledge in, increased considerably this is for a guy who had never gone shooting before right well i mean you know not really shooting and so it forced me to learn this hey this is how the trigger works this is how the upper works this is how the the safety works in fact i mean i've literally gone, gone through with people and explained to them here's how the glock safety works this is why you don't have to worry about a glock accidentally firing like let me show you the mechanics it's physically impossible for a Glock to accidentally fire. It can't happen. It, it literally cannot happen. But that's because I had to do it all from ground the ground up. And it, it put me in a position where I had to learn that stuff. Um, I've done 80% uh, ARs. And um, I did an 80% uh, AR-10. Um, they are tons of fun to do so like there's probably nothing more fun or more man in my in my opinion than building your own firearm and, and that's what i did and i would honestly tell anybody who's getting into firearms if you if you haven't done it do it do it for no other reason than to learn now if they like a state like california then all follow all the laws Tell the state you're going to do it. They're going to give you a serial number. They're going to have you take it to a gunsmith and have it put on. And that's fine. You can do that. And now you're totally legit. I myself just didn't want the state to even know. I have a guy who built guns, so I destroyed all of mine. All of it, completely destroyed it, got rid of it. They come search my house. They're like, I, I got nothing illegal, nothing at all. I'm totally cool. But what I learned from all of that was worth it it was worth everything and that's that's the biggest thing that i would tell people about an 80 percent is what you're gonna learn like like i don't worry about my ar dan i mean something happened on the ar it's like okay i know how to i know how to fix it i literally built it so cool cool you know i know how to take the trigger apart i know how to put it all back together i know how the safety works uh, uh i know how the works works i know how everything works on it because i built it and that's why i recommend people to do it one of the things I need to say about builds is it just makes you – I think you were talking about how manly it makes you feel, right? <laughs> so every time I'm true, putting one man, together, right? yeah, I feel like I should be like smoking a cigarette in a back room and I'm like the the like the like gunsmith in the back that like when, when things are going down and like I'm fixing the guns and they're like, dude, this is amazing. Thank you for getting this right. I'm like, it's no problem, man. Like I want to be that guy and like there's just something cool. My wife came in when I was building mine in my office. Office and you know she's like this is she just well I don't think she was excited as I was but <clears throat> it just made me feel doubly manly and I know that she happened to think that I was more manly I just can tell I mean it's just clear that she definitely saw my manliness in it um, but so that, yeah that 155 pounds you were talking about like on last episode <laughs> all of a sudden it's more like a good two 205 you're like right yeah, yeah. I'm a and man. all in my arms and chest right <laughs> <laughs> so so the um, no man here's the other thing that I would say say just knowing where every part goes yeah. and there is something that happens when you know how it works I, it affects even your shooting because there's there's a knowledge to okay when this when when that thing moves back in the recoil i know everything yeah. that's happening and it really it's it's those things that are like the next level of of like a structure of knowledge underneath all that you're doing when you're shooting. And it just makes you better. I know that not everybody believes that. Yeah, the gun shoots the same whether you know what's going on in it or not. But you know how to handle it better. I just, I am convinced there's a difference there. And so builds are an awesome idea, especially when we're talking about 80 percenters. Well, and I, I think too that um, the, the, the confidence like you're talking about, like when I first started down this path, I, I didn't know much about guns. Like I didn't grow up in a gun family. My father grew up on a, on a farm 
And so, you know, as he likes to tell us, that's all they did there is they, they shot basically BB guns. And then when he graduated high school, his parents got him a 30-30. And I remember hearing that story. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You waited until I was married and owned a home before you would give me my grandfather's 22 long rifle, right? And you're, <laughs> you graduate high school and your parents give you a 30-30 as like a high school graduation gift. I'm like, what happened? <laughs> like, how did this happen? Uh, other than I know it was my mom, right? My mom is totally not a gun person at all. Oh. And so, I mean, that's 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 what happened. But so, you know, here's a guy who didn't come from a gun family. And now I'm like, hey, I want to learn everything there is to know about guns. I want to, you know, really master this this craft. And so to be able to, to learn how everything works, um, everything from, you know, the... Uh, the the recoil uh uh man now i've got now i got a blank going on in my head on the ar but the uh the recoil tube and the and buffer tube the buffer yeah. tube right all, all that like to understand this is how everything works man i just i don't worry about stuff like if it breaks the, the one thought that always goes through my head is well i know how to put it all back together <laughs> like yeah it's not that hard <laughs> and well, and i've the, seen it however many times and what's funny is like even though i've done uh, ARs many, many times. There are certain aspects like on a mil spec AR when you're not using a drop in trigger. And for those of you that aren't familiar with it, there are triggers that are all self contained and you literally just drop it in. But when you're not using a drop in trigger, you got to like, you know, get it just perfect to get everything in there and get the pin set. Yeah. I will go back to Brownell's site and rewatch the video and be like, oh, yep. that's right. Okay, I need to do this to get that right or, you know, yep. whatever it might be. But it's not a big deal because it's like, yeah. okay, I can do this. And, oh, that's right. Now, now I got that refresher because it's not like you do it every day, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm, it's, you know, so it's, yeah. it it takes a little bit of yeah. time. But, well, um, but certainly the confidence that I have. Um, the other thing, too, is now I did – a couple of different kits and I don't remember who the first kit was, but I want to say the second kit was from, I want to say five D tactical, I think is what it was called. Okay. And they sell, uh, you know, 80% everything. They sell the jigs. Um, the one that I really liked was, uh, they, they had like a ratings of, uh, uh, ro- r- routers or what do you call it? A root router. Router, yeah. Right, right. Uh, like, it just sounds weird. I'm thinking of a tech router, uh, yeah. the internet router. But they, they like, they rated them. They're like, oh, this one's the best right here. And, you know, depending on which one you buy, we'll send you the right, you know, piece to use. And so, uh, so I was like, okay, what's the best one I should buy? And they said, you know, buy this one. So I bought that router. Uh, I bought the jig for it off of Amazon or the, uh, uh, um, not the jig, the, uh, Jeez, man, now I'm having a blank on all the terms. I hate when that happens. But, That's you know, right. base, the, the piece that that locks it all down onto the, the table that I'm working on. Yeah. And, I mean, you know, I just went to town and just, you know, drilled everything out, basically using the router so it wasn't a, a drill. And it's incredibly easy to do, like incredibly mm-hmm. easy. And then when you're done at the end of the day, you're like, I did this. <laughs> you yeah. know, like I made this. Yeah. And it's good. It's that same feeling you get when you build really anything on your own. Um, but it's, there, I don't know, I think there's a next level thing when it's a gun. Yeah. It's, it's just special. Um, I'll tell you the other thing. Uh, there's something about not only the knowledge of knowing how it works and everything, but now you get to say, I've done this. Yeah. And so I, I've been in conversations. I get into a lot of uh, conversations with anti-gun people. And, and usually... Usually, they're pretty friendly. Um, I, I hopefully I say this with humility, but I think some of it is that like anti-gun people are not used to talking to a person who is knowledgeable, and so when they sit down and have a conversation with an actual person from the other side of the aisle, they're usually just straw man fighting. Um, they're kind of they don't want to talk much because they realize they're beaten. Um, but I love being able to say to a gun grabber. No, 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 no. I've built this gun and I can tell you that what you're saying is false. Right. And so to be able to say, here's, I actually know how it works internally. And it's, (laughs) you know, it's the platform that makes it an AR and blah, blah, blah. 
Because my favorite is I have this lawyer friend that I run into at Starbucks every now and then, and he every now and then wants to talk about how great the government is and how wonderful they are. And I think I've hurt his feelings a couple of times when I've been like, um, but wait a minute. Uh, but what was great was one time he's talking to me about, he's like, yeah, we just need to outlaw AR-15s because they're just, it's just such a powerful round. There's no, there's no hunting round that is as powerful as an AR-15. And I'm like, well, that's just not true. Like, first of all, an AR-15 is a platform. It's not a round. But if you're going to go with like what the classic 556 or 223, that's still smaller than a 308. You it's know? not like, even legal in some states because it's such a small round. Yeah. And um, to be able to speak with knowledge on that to someone um, and even talk about like, well, hey, I mean, you know, we make them that you can shoot a 308 out of, but then it's not an AR-15 anymore. It's an AR-10. To be able to have that knowledge Five less and just ARs. be able to... Right. Yeah. To just be able to say to them, hey, um, I've done this. I know something about it because I built it part by part, piece by piece. And um, yeah, so that there's there's some value in that as well. Yeah, I, so. I honestly think it was it was the best thing for me to do was to to both do the the 80 uh, percent Glocks and the ARs. Um, yeah. I still haven't done a uh, 1911 though i would like to do a 1911 or really i would like to do a 2011 as we were talking before this this show uh because california has got what they call the handgun roster we really can't get like there's no 2011 that i'm aware of that's on the roster that's available for purchase from a dealer in california which means you can only get it from a private party which means it comes at a serious premium i mean most 2011s, you're going to cost on the 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 cheapest, you know, thirty five hundred to you know seventy five hundred dollars uh, yeah. to get one here in California, and it's just like it's ridiculous. And so I would like to make my own, but again, now because of the law, um, I'm not going to do it mainly because again, I don't I don't really feel like letting the state of California know, hey, I'm I'm one yeah. of those guys that likes to make firearms. I'd rather just not not be on that list because <laughs> I don't trust California. Yeah. But if I lived in a free state, I would one hundred percent tell everyone do it. In fact, if you live here in California, I tell you to do it and just register it with the DOJ. You can get on their list. I'm not going to, but you go ahead and do it. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But I, I think what you learn that the value in that it, it's worth everything. It's worth everything right there. Yeah. So, um, you know, here's the other thing is the price to make 80 percenters has come way down. Yeah. Um, you know, like you can go to it's I think it's 80 dash lower dot com and they have jigs and some of sometimes they'll run a deal where you get the 80 percent lower with the jig. But the jigs are like one hundred thirty five bucks. Um, and so think, I mean, you get by the jig, you bought it once you do everything you need to do with it. Now, and you can use it over jigs. and over and over again. Yeah. And now there's different types of jigs and some people swear by this type and that type. But man, for 135 bucks and then you buy however many 80 percent lowers if you're in you know free state like I'm in, just buy a crap ton of them. And man, you can make, make as many as you want. Some of these too. Now, I'm not recommending this, uh, but I think on the 80-lower.com, there's other sites. I think they've got the polymer, uh, polymer lower with the kit for the polymer lower and it's something like 75 bucks for them together now that's if you're into polymer lowers i'm not recommending those but the, to be able to have the jig and the lower for 75 bucks for right. crying out loud so um there's just it's just not even that expensive anymore i mean it used to be that by the time you bought the jig and everything um you were maybe three or four hundred bucks into it uh, i think and even that so what though i mean three or four hundred yeah, bucks it's still not it's, that much yeah oh my gosh i i did buy um after after one of the mass shootings, I don't remember which one it was, I did buy five uh, AR-15 lowers um, that are still in the 80% format. So I'm totally compliant. Right. And I have the jig. Because it's just a block of metal. Because it's just a block yeah. of metal, right. As far as the state of California and the ATF is concerned, it's a paperweight. And that's all it is. And that's totally legal here in California. And so I leave it like that. I have not uh, drilled it out to turn it into a firearm. And so because I haven't drilled it out, I'm totally legal. But I do have that. I have it as my as – my, if it hits the fan, I'm going to yep. drill those suckers out, man. But <laughs> but until then, I'm totally compliant, right? I'm 100% compliant. 
<laughs> put up a sign, Pete Mitchell's Boogaloo Gun Manufacturing in a post-grid scenario. In a post-grid, yes. And it would only have to be a post-grid scenario. That's, I mean, and if I lived outside of California, in fact, I, I did want to buy a place in Nevada. And I was like, man, I'm just going to buy a place in Nevada and move all my 80 percenters there. And uh, hey, if I ever do buy a place in Nevada and they're still a free state, then I probably would go back and redo all my 80 percenters because I got all everything else for it. Right. It's just literally the lower and about 30 minutes worth of work. And, you know, I got a working firearm. I'd redo them all. And I just keep them outside of California. I just I, it's yeah. not worth it in California. It's just it's not worth going to jail. I mean, that's just the bottom yeah. line. It's not worth it. Yeah. So, man, I, I think this is worth just mentioning to everybody. If you want to get into this, just put it together here. You could do, um, like we said, you could get a jig for 135 bucks, however many lowers for not that much. Um, you could do the rest of your build out. If you wanted to just do basic mill spec uh, for another 300 bucks per gun, you can, you can do ARs. Now, I recommend if you're going to build one, build it right. Get yourself a really nice barrel. You guys have heard me talk yep. about the uh, uh, 223 Wild, where you can shoot 5.56 five, yep. and 223, but 223 is super accurate through it. Um, get yourself, you know, might as well upgrade your trigger. Mil spec triggers are fun, but man, as you mentioned earlier, you can get a drop in kit for even as little as 200 bucks and you're doing something really special. Um, you know, get your upper that'll do the job, get your, um, you know, get yourself your buffer tube and your stock. I mean, you can go actually the learms.net AR build subscription is free. Of course, it's only telling you, uh, you know, about the type of accessories you want and need. Uh, but get on that, learn all the various options you could have. But man, you can get into this for, for crying out loud, 500 bucks. For the price of buying an AR outright, you can do a pretty cool build. Now, it's not going to be special if you up, unless you kind of like upgrade and you do some little things better, but for under a thousand bucks, you can do something amazing. Like you can build amazing ARs for eight, 900 bucks and be able to do all kinds of amazing stuff on it. Well, the other thing too, and the big thing is you're doing, you're learning your firearm. You're Mm -hmm. making something that you truly made. And more importantly than that, quite frankly, no one knows about it. And that, to me, yes. is the real reason to do it. Because I, everyone who's like, oh, no, all these guns are going to be out there. No one knows. The government does not know where 80% of the guns are already. Like, don't yeah. think because it's got a serial number, that means crap. Most states yeah. are not like California. Most states, you can do private party transfer. They don't know where these guns are. All they know is who originally bought it. And even then, they have to call the freaking store that sold it and ask them. Yeah. Hey, by the way, here's the serial number. Who'd you sell it to? And then they got to go look it up. And then they tell the ATF, this is who we sold it to. And so don't be under this impression that, oh, well, it's bad if the government doesn't know. The government already doesn't know. I think it's just even better now that they will never know. Right? They don't yep. need to know that this firearm exists because, honestly, yep. I just don't trust our government. I, yep. I literally don't trust them. So. Well, this is part of preserving our freedom, man, because if, a, you know, if they know where guns are registered and if they want to do their door-to-door red flag checks, they're going to come where they know they're registered. Um, if they also know that there is an unknown quantity of unknown guns anywhere out there that anybody could have, it's going to deter them from wanting to go door to door. I can tell you that. And um, I think we make it as hard as possible because for the most part, the type of people that are doing what we want to do uh, are freedom loving, caring people that are, they, they want to do this because it's fun and they want to protect others, including their own family. And um, yeah, it's the other thing I'm reminding everybody, you guys have probably seen the memes out about this, but you know, we've had 200 and some years of gun freedom in this country. They are just now getting real serious about taking away our guns. And it means they're about to do something that we would shoot them for. Like, that's what it means. And so keep your guns, <laughs> make some <laughs> make some out of 80 percenters, uh, make sure they don't know about them, and just keep being free, man. Yeah, it's about the only way that you're going to protect yourself is to have your 80 percenter. And maybe, uh, maybe you got it buried somewhere and, you know, and you course a couple of thousand rounds is as we would tell everyone just uh you mm-hmm. know have your have thousand your freedom rounds. uh have your freedom properly hidden so when yeah. you need it it's there that's that's what those uh uh 12 inch pvc pipes with end caps are for <laughs> um 
that's you know there's just good i think i need to do I, I think i need to do a run over to home depot one of these days you I, probably do i i do too i think yeah actually everybody should get themselves uh, a capped pvc uh just for the sake of storing a lot of things you can do some really nice you know watertight storage it's it's a good thing like i recommend it whether it's guns or whatever of course but also course. for guns yeah. <laughs> it's good <laughs> Oh man, it's gonna be it's fun. You know, Pete, I gotta tell you, the type of people when I'm talking about things and they realize, you know, the things I'm into. And so the other day, <laughs> I um, this is a side note. The other day, I put a chimney in my garage so I can have a wood burning stove out there. I can do my like woodworking in the winter and things like that. And and so a friend of mine, knowing that this makes me a little bit more country, that I actually have a heated wood burning garage to do woodworking in there. He's like, Oh man, now all you need is a blacksmith forge. And I'm like, yeah, I have one of those. <laughs> and he's like, of course you do. Nice. <laughs> and then I say, yeah, well now I have this heated garage in case Christy ever like gets mad at me, and throws me out of the house. I have a warm place to go. And he's like, yeah, you're going to have to get like some, you know, like a hammock hung up in there. I'm like, yes, I have one of those in my bug out bag. And he's like, of course you have a bug out bag. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man, this is what it's like to be a man. (laughs) I would really, you know, the thing that I haven't done that I really want to learn how to do is how to cast my own lead bullets. Ah, yes. Um, It's not as hard as you might think. I don't think um, it probably would be not yeah, not after everything I have done. <laughs> but yeah, I actually, been... it's probably it's it's pretty easy. Like, I mean, you you got to be careful with lead when you're melting it down. Sure, but it's, it's doable. You got you get the right molds. It's not that bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, my I think my dad had like a cap and ball revolver where he he could make the he could melt down the balls for it. Yeah, nice. which is kind of cool. Yeah, Love man. It. So always good fun. Recommend all this stuff and. Um, yeah, I'm going to tell you, man, in all this conversation, one of the best compliments I get is when somebody's like, man, if it all goes down, I'm coming to your house. I know, right? And I'm like, oh, that makes me feel good. And then I'm like, you better bring something so you can contribute. <laughs> so, See, like, your response is better because my response is always, what makes you think I'm going to let you into my house? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, hey, you can come over here. I'm going to put you to work. You know, I'm like, somebody's going to have to be building the fort around our house. Like, if you don't bring guns, food, and ammo, then you're going to have to bring yourself. You're going to have to put up with I'm joking about that. but That's, yeah, that's right, because you are going to bring guns, food, and ammo if you're coming over. <laughs> that's right. Good stuff, cool. man. Cool. All fun. Yeah. We should get everybody building some ARs. That's that's the bottom line rule today. Yes, absolutely. Why don't you go ahead and give uh, Ellie Arms our uh, official sign-off? Yeah, man. So Lake Erie Arms, as you guys know, we plug them all the time. These guys are great. And especially when we're talking about AR builds, uh, you can do a, you can get a lot of parts online. There's no question. You can get a lot of cool stuff online. But to be able to walk into Lake Erie Arms, into a store, we've got guys who build ARs all the time. And we have the parts on site. It's parts that we've vetted, we've used, we know they're good. So you're not just getting some crazy crap offline that you don't know about. You get to handle it. You get to talk to a guy who has used it, who has built with it. And as you're building your gun, you got real experts you can talk to. So Lake Erie Arms here in Northeast Ohio, Huron, Ohio, actually. Go to learms.net. Check out all we got. And um, just in relation to all we've been talking to, there is a free subscription for emails and videos on what you need to know about building your AR. They don't go into the how to build. They go into all the parts you need, all the specs. Uh, you'll learn a lot. And it just kind of opens up the world of what you could do. There's plenty of other videos online that'll tell you how to build. We wanted to go a different direction and provide some other real special knowledge for you. So go to learms.net, download the AR build videos, sign up for that subscription, and enjoy. It's all free. All right. Have a great day. Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll talk to you next week. Take care, everybody. You've been listening to the From Concealment Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Dan Sams. Be sure to tune in next week for more gun talk. Also, check out the From Concealment website for more shooting-related goodness at fromconcealment.com.